This time we're going to ramp it up a little bit and we're going to have three charges not on a straight line, which is fine. It's just doing some trig so we can get there. We want the net force on Q3, which is this one right here. <coughs> yes, it is. For whatever reason, I thought I wanted to do this one. Let's take a look at what the force is. Let's do this in a different color. So Q1 to Q3, I have a positive charge to a negative charge. So the force vector for Q1 to Q3 is going this away. It's attracted to. Q1 to Q3, well, that is going to be repulsive. They're both positive charges. So remember, I want to do this in a straight line. Let's do this. So kind of drawing a straight line here almost ish. I'm going to have my vector there. So let's redraw that so it's nice and clear as to what we have. We have that force vector there and that force vector there. So this would be F2 on 3 and this is F1 on 3. Let's define what's positive. I'm going to define up and to the right as positive. And I look at this, let's see, I have essentially a square, right? So if I have a square and I bisect a square, what are my angles? Well, I'm going to have 45 degree angles. So I have a 45 here and a 45 here. It's a perfect square. So I know that this angle here is 45. What I need now is my X and Y components of this one. Let's make it a different color. So here is going to be my X vector and then my Y vector for this particular force is coming straight up like this. Now let's do our sum sum of my forces then in the x. It's going to be the x component of this vector and it's going in what I've defined as a positive direction so F1 on 3 and that vector is touching the angle so it's going to be cosine of 45. Now F2 on 3 is all on axis so I don't need an angle for that but I do need to define that as being a negative because it's going in the negative direction. So it's going to be minus force 2 on 3. What is this going to equal? It's going to equal our net force there. The sum of our forces in the y, well, we only have the 1. I have the y component of this force here. So I have force 1 on 3, and that's going to be sine, it's the opposite side of that angle, so sine of 45. And that will give me my FQ. <coughs> so now we can write it out and actually solve. Yeah, I'll do it over here so I have space. So my F and the X, where I end up with force 1 on 3 and 2 on 3. I'm going to do the same trick I did before. I'm going to pull K out and Q3 out. Because remember that 10 to the 9 and uh, 10 to the 9, uh, actually this is micro not, ma not nano. So micro is 10 to the negative 6. Still going to make it a little easier. 10 to the 9 times 10 to the negative 6. 9 minus 6 is 10 to the 3. So it's still a little bit easier on the button pushing. And then what do I have on the inside? I'm going to have Q1, which is 5 times 10 to the negative 6, divided by, and that distance, oops, we haven't decided to find that. So Pythagorean, this is going to be 0.1 squared plus 0.1 squared, otherwise known as the square root of 0.02 square root, sorry. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That gets us our distance. So I'm going to have down here point oops, square root of, forgot my square root, 0.02. 
and that's my r squared squaring it. Now I'm going minus f213, so that's that straight line, and 2 is 2 times 10 to the negative 6, divided by that distance, which is just the point 0.1 squared. And my f and the y, oops, I forgot my, co my cosine, cosine of 45. Bad me, let me erase that. cosine of 45. Now my f in the y, um, I can do the same thing if I want. I can go kq3 and then my inside is only going to be the one term. So I at least keep some simplification there for my button pushing. And then we are looking at the 5 nano, so 5 times 10 to the negative 6 times sine of 45, and that is divided by that distance, that point square root of, I don't know why I don't want to write the square root, point oh two, and that's my r squared, so I'm squaring it. Now we're ready to put things in our calculator. And we're going to put all of that in our calculator, and you can see I kind of skipped ahead. Um, so the inside of my brackets becomes this negative 23.22. That is not putting in the signs of the charges. That's just doing the subtraction. So I get that. And now I can look at my exponents if I want. You can fast forward past this. If you don't care about simplifying things, that's fine. What do I have? I have 9 minus 6 minus 6. So 9 minus 12 is going to give me 10 to the negative 4. One way to think about that is I cross this one out. With that, that leaves me 3. Whoa! I can't do math in my head, can I? 3 minus 6 is 10 to the negative 3. Double checked and confirmed. And then I'm going to have the same thing here. I have my 10 to the negative 6s, my 10 to the 9s. So if I want to simplify life, I just have 8.99 times 5, same thing is happening down here, times this 176.8, and then multiply that all by 10 to the negative 3. And when I'm all said and done, I go from this kind of really ugly looking numbers to this negative 1.04. This is Newton's, and this is Newton's. So let's remind ourselves what that means this is just giving us coordinates, right? So that tells me that I am, what, coming out in the negative direction in the x, because this is my x piece. So I'm going to have a vector that comes like this in the x. And then my vector in the y is positive, so it's going up above the axes. So that tells me that my resultant net force is going to be coming like that. And I want this angle here. So Pythagorean, I'm going to have then the square root, my net force, net. It's going to be the square root of each of my x and y forces squared, because it's just Pythagorean. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I don't like putting in my negatives because if I button push it wrong, the calculator is going to end up subtracting things if the negative doesn't end up inside of uh, parentheses for your square. And because a negative squared is going to become a positive, there's just no reason to risk it. So 7.94 squared, so let's see what we get. We get that squared plus That, let's put that, actually that'll be easier, plus that squared to the square root. So if my force net then will be 8.014 newtons. 
and my angle, because that's, remember we want to have a direction and a magnitude that gives us the magnitude of the net force. For the angle I can use well, pretty much any of my preferred trig equations. It's up to you. So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Therefore, the arc tan of my opposite side, well, my opposite side of the angle is my y component. Where's my y? It's the 7.94 divided by my 1.04. And again, I'm not putting in the negative sign there because I've already defined where it lives. So the angle is going, the numeric value you will get in your calculator is going to be the exact same thing. But if I've already used my components and drawn something out, putting in the negative sign can tend to lead me down the path of changing that answer. We don't want to do that. So let's do this arctan. And if you're like me, you might button push this and got a different answer. If you did, double check your units. So 7.94 divided by 1.03. Where'd you go? And I get 82 degrees. Oops, 8 degrees. And I just want to do that one more time. Divided by 1.04. Yep. So 82, 82.5-ish, depending on where you round. And there you have it. So we found the net force. There's the force net. And we found at what angle that net force lives with respect to the axes.